This is Larry Zabisco Wrestling's Living Legend, and you're watching Monty and the Pharaoh. All right, welcome to another edition of Monty and Faro, seen every Thursday here on Village Connection Radio from 8.05 to 9 p.m. every Thursday, only here in Rockstar Studios at the board once again, another, none other than Stephen Miller. And there's Bart Griggs, who can't remember to turn his phone off. There you go. Anyway, no other than Stephen Miller. Hey, How are you, Stephen? Very well. And to the right, too, is none other than the star of the show, Jimmy Farrow. Yo. And the most important part of the show is another superstar guest, Mr. Lanny Poffo. Lanny, thank you for joining. You're welcome. But I'm very, very disappointed now. Why would you be disappointed? Well, you've had Larry the legend, the living legend, as opposed to the legend that is deceased, right? Mm. Bruno Sammartino. Okay. Right. Mm. So okay, forth, and he was in the open of the show. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what's back here? I'm oh. supposed to be enhanced by some magic. I, um, yes. By, and, um, and, and all of a sudden I come here, I, and I come here, and I'm giving, and I'm giving, and I'm giving, yeah. and I give some more. Yes. And you can't even make this television work. I've got half a mind to get up, take my satchel, and move on down the line with my empty bag of dreams, wandering aimlessly down life's highway. Well, if you want, you could take that with you because it does do really much good for us right about so, now. So what I have to say is we, we, we affectionately call that you've been savalied. What? Oh, my God. What's no, that mean? Uh, Jim Savali's the owner of the station, and usually things go wrong here. So when things go wrong like this, we go, you've been savalied. Well, I look behind you, and you've got like a oh, an incredible, an incredible city background. Yeah, but in it's, fact, I feel like yeah. just jumping right out this window right now. <laughs> but it's low tech; <laughs> it's just two window. dimensional. It's yeah, and uh, this yeah. here is high tech, yeah. and it doesn't yeah. work. Of so what does that tell you? Schmancy. That's uh, what does that tell you? Um, it's, it's called fancy schmancy. It's called time to change studios. <laughs> what? Oh my God! What is going on I'm here? Just, uh, I'm fine. How do you do? I'm okay. sorry. Uh, what's the shortest interview you've ever had? Um, it oh could boy. be the most recent one. It could be right now. Because <laughs> I'm about to. Lanny, you're hurting my feelings right now, my I friend. I know you had any. Can we make this work? I'm working no, on it, man. Apparently not. And that's why we have the Pharaoh. So Pharaoh's going to get us going while I can try to get that going. Oh, I'm going to get us going. Okay. Okay, why don't we just do what my grandparents did? Change. We're going to make do. I thought you were going to change the channel. We're going to make <laughs> do. Yeah, we're going to make do with what we have. Not, In other words... Not do-do, just do. No, that's, just do. That's like not, not, the, not Mountain Dew. No. Or duty figure. We're going to <laughs> improvise. We're going to show that we are professionals, and this is professional show business. Oh, okay. And we're going to do our best, and it's going to be an interview that is above average, oh, slightly. Right. Just enough slightly. to get... Just well, enough like to get by. Way. Listen, when yeah. you're here, it's always going to be above average. Just in enough fact, to get by. That's it's it. going to be brilliant. Well, let me ask you. Well, let me ask you while I got you here. In between this time and last time we had you, uh, well, I got you. Here. And, and right after, right after you, you were never on did with have us. me. I don't put out. Well, that's true. <laughs> this is true too. I wasn't looking to possess either, so let's not get carried away. Um, <laughs> you, were, <laughs> you were recently right after you were with us. Oh, I, I couldn't believe it. I saw you at the All In event. <clears throat> Your thoughts on the AEW brand? If I can ask, well, that was the Ring of Honor, okay. And uh, not all, not, not um, AEW brand yet, right? And uh, it was I owe it all to my very dear friend Jay Lethal, okay. Who he had a whimsical idea to let the genius accompany him to the ring. We were brothers from another mother, <laughs> and I see the resemblance. By the way, go on. Yes, I <laughs> thank you. It's uh. At my age, it'll be an improvement. Uh, yes. Oi, oi. 
Oh boy. Yes. Dig yourself out of that hole. I'm not helping. Go on. <laughs> it was uh, it was a great night because I'm from Chicago. Got a nice pop from the audience. One last hoorah before. That was a nice pop. Yeah, before I um, bite the big one, as they say. Oh. Okay. Cash in my chips, as some people say. It's very optimistic. Yeah, yeah Lanny. Well, well in 36 years, I'll be 100. Did, did, was it the New Japan experience that made you feel that way? I, I wanted to ask you about the New Japan experience, because also, since the last time we saw you, you popped up on the New Japan Network. How'd that come about? I was very, very lucky, because the people from New Japan, excellent people, and they treated me so well. And not only did I get to... See, I've never been to Japan. Of all the places I've been, I've never been to Tokyo, never been to Japan, and they made sure... I got the tourist experience while I was there. And they had, they did it themselves. They had people do it for me. And I was very, very appreciative of the manner in which I was speaking. You know, listen, they didn't have anything like this no. in the back. No. They didn't? No, no. no they don't no. have TVs in Japan? No, they, their TVs uh, no, worked. Godzilla roasted them all. They, oh, they worked. Well, yeah. They, <laughs> well, they had working TVs. They had working TVs. No village, no village connection in Japan. Would you please. <laughs> oh, my and Lord. Since I, and since I've seen you last... Yeah. I've been to Scotland. Okay. Really? Yes, I have. Nice. Does Finn Balor know about this? Who's being, that? Being Scottish. Oh, I forgot you don't watch the product currently. He's one of the stars of the current. Uh, how did you find Scotland? And don't tell me you turned left to Greenland. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Thank you. Now, here's what uh, <laughs> the promoter, David Lowe. I don't know how he pronounces it. Lowe or Lowe, whatever. I think it's Lowe. It's hard to understand a word these people are saying. You have a great Scottish accent. Do it. Oh, thank you, sir. Do it. I appreciate that very much. Thank you, sir. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, that's right. It's more Mr. Scott than it is anybody mm -hmm. else, but <laughs> from Star Trek. But so what I did, um, I the promoter asked me if I could wrestle, and I said no, I cannot, because a man sixty-four years old has no business in the ring, not even to sweep it. Mm. But I said. What I would like to do, I've got a bucket list a mile long, and I keep adding to it, and I keep crossing things off as I accomplish them. And what I did was I sang the national anthem in Scotland, um, except it wasn't the national anthem because theirs is, um, um, theirs is that English one, uh, and they don't, want, they don't like England at all. They're trying to break it off. Mm -hmm. It's not working out. Right. They don't like it. Right. So if they, their national anthem is God Save the Queen. God Save Our Gracious Queen. You know, that stuff. Mm -hmm. And they don't like it. Mm. So I said, can I sing the song that Amy McDonald sang in the national anthem? They said, yes. So um, I went out there, and I'd like to do a few bars for you, if sure, I may. Sure, please, by all means. As long as this isn't working, I'll do my best to okay. carry the show. I'll try to put a flag up in the meantime. Go on. Okay. O oh, flower of Scotland, when will we see your like again? Who fought and died for your wee bit hill and glen and stood against him? Who? Proud Edward's army, wanker, and sent him homeward, tae think again. Those days are past now, and in the past they must remain, but we can still rise now. And be that nation again that stood against him. Who? Proud Edward's army. Wanker. And sent him homeward. Tay think again. You know what wanker means, don't you? Uh, I know it's not a positive thing. <laughs> no. I got to tell you, you got an amazing recall. Like you, yeah, you, you, really can, do. you do. It's like you, you really just do. pull this I, out. I remember the I first remember time. my name. I remember the first time I went for a wanker. <laughs> and my father walked in. And he said, if you don't quit, you'll go blind. And I said, Dad, I'm over here. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That is Is awesome. this working yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Hang in there. Hang in there. Hang on. Wait, wait. <laughs> Hang in there. Sooner or later it'll work. How did you find the difference between Japanese audiences' uh, attention span compared to American wrestling audiences? I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's on a roll. He's on a roll now. Now, it was, uh, the Japanese people are The Japanese people are very polite. Different it's world. amazing. It's amazing. You know, all that trouble in 1941, I can't understand it. Because they're so nice. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. I guess it was Tojo Yamaboto and um, the other guy, uh, Emperor Hirohito. Mm. But hey, I got to go to every 
I did all the tourist things. It was fantastic. Can I say the flight was a little long? How long? Um, I had to go th- from Tampa to Dallas, three hours. Mm. And from Dallas to Tokyo Marita, um, 13 hours. Great. And then we got in a bus. God. And it seemed like we drove endlessly to my hotel. And they didn't put the Tokyo Hotel anywhere near Tokyo. <laughs> it was like, okay. you know, but it's, I'll tell you what, um, I don't think birth control has really worked there. Really? No, it's the, it's the size of California, and they've got like 175 million people. Packed together. So it's, it's not based on individuality, it's based on harmony. And um, there's a lot of suicide there, too. Really? Well, if you're working uh, 19 hours a day, 20 hours a day, sooner or later, I mean, that's, that's a that problem. Is that their average work, work it's day like seven, it's, not aware. it's like the life of Monty. Every day, 14-hour oh, no. days. That's horrendous. No, but that's why suicide's up there, because people just can't take it. It's too and much I'll, work. And I'll tell you what, I don't mean to give you a big lecture. Go ahead. But you know how we have low interest rates, and you know we're trying to get them lower and this and that? Yeah. Um, in Japan, they have negative interest rates. So if you have your money in the bank, you actually lose money. <laughs> that's right. Oy. Put it in your mattress. That's not a good game. And another thing, when I was in Osaka, I had to go to 14 rest- restaurants before they accepted my credit card. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's all cash there. And their yen is larger than the dollar bill, right. even though it's practically worthless compared. <laughs> you know, it's got several zeros. Um, and... I'm just thinking, they're so efficient. They got a great train schedule, and everything's right. 180 mile bullet how, train. How clean is the city of oh, Tokyo? Clean? So clean, it's unbelievable. Yes. So compared to New York, oh my God, right? Well, Big they difference. don't. New York, uh, the subways have this urine stench. You know, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, uh, yeah, they do. That's, either, not very, that's not very nice. And burning burning pretzels and hot dogs and urine all mixed with cigars. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mixed together. Yeah, well, that sounds the, about right. Like in the schools in Japan. New York. <laughs> in the schools in Japan, there are no custodians or janitors. What? All the children have the responsibility to pick up after themselves. They all give them chores, and these these chores no, must and be. Oh, they got them tushy water fountains you were telling me about too. They're very they have different. bidets, yes. They, yeah, they don't use toilet paper. They got these uh, anal swivels. Most how, most, how's most, that for most science? Are like that. <laughs> do you do you like to criticize things you don't know about? Oh no, <laughs> I'm actually not criticizing. I'm flat out making fun of it. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you th- do you think? Uh, do you think like the European society or the Japanese society is better than the American society? No. Okay. Why? Why? Let's go, get deep. Okay, go there and tell me that I've never. I've been to many, many countries. I've been all over Europe. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody's talking about Sweden. What a great society Sweden is! Listen, I wrestled one night in Stockholm, and I wrestled one night in Copenhagen, or Copenhagen. Don't know. I know, John. Um, You're the expert, Miller. Copenhagen or Copenhagen? You say Hagen, I say Hagen. You say Let's potato, I say potato. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Okay. I wrestled in Stockholm. I wrestled in Copenhagen. I wrestled in Copenhagen. I wrestled in Zurich, Switzerland. And here's what I learned Zurich, Switzerland makes Stockholm and Copenhagen look like a mausoleum. Mm. And the difference is, Zurich has a thing called free market capitalism. And Stockholm has been crippled by socialism. So you better go there before you start voting. And you better go there before you start telling me how to vote. There you go. I vote for the greatest builder of wealth is free market capitalism. Mm. That's the only thing that has made earnings. That's the only thing that's created wealth. But... If you go to Caracas, Venezuela, you know, they don't have toilet paper and not because they have bidets. It's because they don't have anything anymore because it's the government takeover of everything. Mm. And how they do it, they get all these people that aren't doing as well to be jealous of the people that are doing very well. You know, they say trickle down economics is a bad thing. Well, guess what? Florida is trickle down economics. Because the better you rich people do in New York, the more of you people come to Florida and spend money. That's right. You know, and then we get the money. you got to stop making sense like this. Go on. Well, this, it's just what it is. Free market capitalism spreads wealth. And um, it also is very moral 
because what is immoral is socialism because just because you vote on it doesn't mean you can steal from me. You see what I mean? Anyway, end of lecture, and I'm sure I've lost half your audience. No, you Not actually, you didn't lose me at all. As a matter of fact, I wanted to ask you, compare JFK's ideology to today's democracy approach. Well, it's not your father's Democratic Party anymore. Amen. Okay, not that I know anything about John Fitzgerald Kennedy. We observe today not a victory of party, but a celebration of freedom, symbolizing an end as well as a beginning, signifying renewal as well as change. For I have sworn before you and Almighty God the same solemn oath our forebears prescribed nearly a century and three quarters ago. And it goes, And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. <sighs> yeah. yeah. My fellow citizens of the world, ask not what America can do for you, but ask what together we can do for the freedom of man. Okay, so basically, you know, I was oh, about nine years old on November 22nd, 1963. And let me tell you something. The Democrat Party, they are not, they don't come to JFK's knees. He was the man. And he believed in the lowering of the taxes in order to stimulate the economy because that's how, trust me, that's how Trump did it. Mm -hmm. When the tax break came in, that's how it all happened. And look at all that wealth and prosperity. And you got, who's that guy uh, with the big nose on HBO? Um, I don't watch him, but his name mm -hmm. is... Uh, Bill Maher? Yeah, thank you. Blah. <laughs> yeah, you know what he even said? Um, he says, Trump is bragging, bragging about the e economy. And you know what he says? I'm rooting for a recession what? and a depression. I said, How American? Donald Trump deserves <laughs> to be on Mount Rushmore. Bill Maher is a bad citizen mm. wishing for mm. failure for this president. Well, because this is us. U.S. stands for us. Right. United States. Right. Come on. Uh, get with the program. Well, Bill Maher also spends a lot of time trying to humiliate religious people also. He tries to make you feel guilty of, you know, following a certain religion. He flat out tries to make you feel stupid. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I know you don't watch him, but I, I, don't, I try not to watch him. But he does. I try not to, but he infiltrates, uh, you know, Fox News because they play what he says. Yeah, and sure. That. Mm. So the thing is, um, nobody knows which religion is true, or if any of them are true. Mm -hmm. But as I, I'm not a gambling man, and in 36 years, if I'm not dead, I will be 100. So it's just the last 36 years went by like a blink. And I've lost loved ones, and, you know, it's, this is the way to go. But what I'm saying is, if there is a judgment day, and if I stand before my creator, I'm going to be able to tell him that I did not vote for the party of infanticide. It used to be abortion. Now it's infanticide. Mm -hmm. That's what's called progressive. Yeah. It starts with, well, what about rape and incest? Oh, okay, go ahead, rape and incest. You know what I mean? What about if the mother's life is in danger? Well, okay, go ahead and then. But now it's infanticide. Perfectly healthy baby, let's make it comfortable and execute it. Mm. Because they have no rights. Well, excuse me. Mm, Thank nice. you. Yeah, the baby has no say, so at least you can do it. And Alyssa Milano? Whew. By the way, I checked it out. You do have nude photos. And don't you wish you looked like that again? Yeah. Oh, um, my God. That's what happens to people, right? When they when they fall out of that. Gravity that is that's winning, that's Alyssa. Tough. It's tough. Gravity is taking its course. Holy meatloaf. Did you... Uh, <laughs> Did you catch the uh, Leaving ne Never Neverland? The Microsoft? Yes, I did. What are your thoughts on that? I actually watched as much of it as I could stand, and then I had to it. Was, it was it. tough. It was tough. It was to, too it was much tough. for me. But any thoughts you want to share? Okay, plastic surgery-wise, I think Michael Jackson looked perfect after his second nose job mm -hmm. when he was in that one everyone th in does. Thriller. <laughs> yeah, in Thriller, everyone thinks that. He was actually true. prettier than the girl. He was good. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but you know what he did? He wasn't satisfied. No, he clearly and now, wasn't. I got your nose, Michael. I got your nose. You see what I mean? It actually fell off. Yeah. Now, Pretty plastic much. surgery is good if you want to take an apple and shine it up. Right. But if you're going to take an apple and make an orange out of it, it's not going to happen. So, you know, 
do your best and forget the rest. Myself, I would prefer just to leave myself alone. I'm still pissed off about the circumcis- circumcision. Are you really? <laughs> yes. Why? Well, you first, kinda, without it, you got to do the flap. You got to clean. It's, it's first really of all, hard. nobody asked me if I wanted to get circumcised. Secondly, oh, so you were angry that you weren't. You, se- weren't, you weren't. Secondly, the with. Train just go down secondly, the street. What is going on? Now here? listen, nobody asked me if I was going to get circumcised. I was just circumcised, right? And when I was a baby, and nothing to do with it. And then what really makes me mad? Nobody paid me because my foreskin is now being used in Yankee Stadium as a tarpaulin. Really? Was it really? I could have sworn I saw it on eBay. The way things are going. Was They're it, not was, using foreskin was, as tarp. Was, was my, my, really? tarp my, my tarpaulin, my tarp, <laughs> my foreskin is being used as a tarp. Oh, you know what that is? That's a joke. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, all right. All right I, For the size, the size. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 I get it. Yeah. You, you he's, pitching get a, he's pitching a tent <laughs> over there. What well, are you, you know, about? listen, I, I really wanted to stay away from Lanny Dick jokes, but I mean, but if we're going to go there... Well, Lanny's known for having a big penis. He is. Yes, he is. How do you know? No, no, no. You got it all wrong. You got it all what wrong. What is going on? I'm, I'm known for being a big dick. I thought, <laughs> I thought I had that market cornered. Hey. Speaking of that, how's your love life? Oh, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Why do you ask? <laughs> Why not? Why? <laughs> uh, I want to know. I like you. I want to know what it's all. You, you want to know? I'll tell you about my he love life. You want to know if you can get involved in your life? In fact, Lanny, we haven't seen any each other. Each okay. other in a while, but let me just fill you in. I put on about 40 pounds or 30 pounds, and now I'm on a diet, so I'm losing some weight. It's called the uh, Karen Carpenter diet, and it's working well. Oh, my God. You get a T-shirt. I beat anorexia. <laughs> uh, Seriously, though, I've lost like eight pounds in a week. No, it's they, working no. well. Seriously, how's my love life? Let me answer. I don't want to dodge the question. All right. Okay. Don't dodge it. Okay. I, I suffered the most humiliating rejection just recently. See, I thought I was a good lover. I found out she had asthma. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. I'm at, the, I'm at the age I tried for a wanker and my hand fell asleep. <laughs> Listen, at this point of your life, do you even want to deal with women? Seriously. Do I want to deal with women? Yeah, like, are, they like, even worth it anymore? are they even worth it anymore? Are they just a big pain in the ass who needs it? You've seen I, the okay, I'm going to come out of the closet right now. I am bisexual. I'm 64 years old, and if I want it, I have to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> oh. Well, you know, for a second there, you had Patterson very excited. <laughs> sorry. I had to. I'm sorry. I mean. No, this has gone off the rails. It was off the rails before the light went on. I have not. TV working? I would, no, sir, I would no. not. I would not try to kill Pat <laughs> no. Patterson. But I will approve of his obituary. Yeah, well, I can see why you would. If he did pass, would you go? Would you go to the funeral? No, no, I wouldn't go to the funeral. Yeah. Nor would I relieve my bladder on his no. on his grave. Why would you even ask me a question? Did like you that? know that the network recently added a match? And I don't know if I'm see- I was seeing things, but I could have sworn it was your dad against Pat Patterson. Was it really? Yeah. Wow. I could, I, I could have sworn I saw it. It was. It just they just added it to the network, and as I'm watching it, I'm thinking to myself. Kick him in the balls. Kick him in the balls, Angelo. Kick him. Oy, oy, oy. Let's, I want to get serious with you at one point. Um, you know, we've had a couple of guys in here all speak well of you and your brother yes. and your family. I mean, yep. you guys are all iconic. But the one thing they do stand by is that Randy's treatment of Elizabeth. Could, I don't want to even really go that that route. I want to ask you your thoughts on Elizabeth Does Hewlett. Does it bother you that you hear a lot of Well, I know. I want, I want to ask him what he thinks of Elizabeth as a person I believe Elizabeth needs to be in the Hall of Fame right now. Sure. And the fans are going to demand it, and that's when it's going to happen. Okay. Okay. Now, about the people who like to speak ill of the dead, after Pat Patterson dies, I'm going to give it up. Okay? uh, uh, Regretfully, he still has a pulse. Mm. So as soon as (laughs) as as the clock stops... I'm not going to speak ill of the dead, but that didn't keep Pat from going on the DVD and speaking ill about Randy. Right. Okay, two wrongs don't make a right, but here's what I'm going to say to answer your question. What Sir. was it? I can't remember. Well, the question really wasn't about Randy and his treatment of Elizabeth. I just pointed out the fact that some wrestlers have high respect for Randy, high respect for your family. But did feel that he was a bit jealous, but that, but that's okay. not, that's not the question I'm going. In the down. DVD with the Macho Man, mm-hmm. 
Jerry Lawler went on and on about how jealous and obsessed Randy was with Elizabeth, and he was very critical. Okay. And to that, I would like to say, Jerry, Jerry, baby, how many times have you been married? Mm. Once, twice, three times a marriage, <laughs> and but put black. zeros under that. And, and, and by the way, go on Wikipedia and see um, if Jerry Lawler's life reads like the New Testament. No, it doesn't. Something about, oh, I know WWE has a zero tolerance for such shenanigans, but if you don't believe me, go on Wikipedia and read it. I'm kind of going down this road. Did Elizabeth make Randy feel that way? You know, you get involved in relationships. Did she get no reasons to be uh, paranoid? It, it, you know, did, was it like was she just this well, way? Was the and, locker room itself, reason and it made him paranoid. that. It just made him that way. I mean, okay. look, if, if you're drastically in love with someone and they, you know, they're roaming around, it could be tough. And I'm not saying she was. I'm asking the question. We're asking, yeah. Okay, I'm going to answer your question. Sure. And feel free at any time punch me in the face because most no, wrestlers don't do. feel free. I'm no, not. listen, I'm going to be the no. first guest that has not punched anybody in, in the while. face. That's what I'm yes, talking about. We're going to have a non-violent thing, and this thing doesn't work anymore. I, I think Miller's uncomfortable. Okay, right now. <laughs> <laughs> Miller's all right. just get closer just, to Miller, and hopefully it'll no, get stronger. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, do you want me to answer this question? No, I do. All right. Okay, if I wait point, a minute, hold on. You said no. Don't no, no, answer no. the question. Hey, Miller. If I point my finger at you, guess what? Three fingers are pointing back at me. See him? Yep. <laughs> three fingers. See right now, if you point your finger, you. three fingers are pointing back at you. Okay. They think that Randy locked Elizabeth in the closet, but guess what? They don't know if Randy locked Elizabeth in the closet because they didn't have the balls to open the door while Randy was inside. But now that he's gone, they have the temerity to come on shows like this mm. and speak ill of the dead, well, guess what? If you lie about my brother, I'm going to tell the truth about you. Mm. Got it? Nice. Mm. And look at this. Look at it this way. How many times have you been married? Ask yourself. Go in the mirror. Ask yourself. And ask yourself this. Um, when's the last time somebody made love to you and meant it? Mm. Got it? Mm. You sorry-ass people. Don't you dare speak about my brother because I know everything about you guys. Okay? There you go. I'm going to let it go. Yeah. We're going to clean it up. Yeah. Right. And um, hate to be negative. No. I'm I don't think you're negative you at all. Say what you wanted to say okay. about Okay. Well, you know, you know something? Um, it makes us uncomfortable go when, on, when we're, we're asked okay. about it. You know? Go on GeniusLannyPoffo.com. And on the front page of my website is my speech for the Macho Man. Mm. And Awesome speech. You know why? Because I wanted to tell the world that Randy wasn't just a great man. Oh, he was a great man, but not just a great man. I wanted to tell what a good man he was. Mm -hmm. What a good man he was, and what a good man you are not. So you can't come to his knees as a man, or as an individual, or as a cesspool, or anything. So all you can do is criticize the way Randy treated Elizabeth. The story of Randy and Elizabeth is the same story that has been played out in Hollywood and in the lay professions. Boy meets girl. Boy marries girl. Girl hires divorce lawyer, takes boy to cleaners. Girl dies of drug overdose. Boy dies of heart attack, specifically ventricular fibrillation. Mm -hmm. Which happens the in all the story is the people. same. Mm -hmm. The names and faces are different. Right. Give me a fucking break. Absolutely. No. Absolutely. You're telling the story of a lot of different, you know, everybody. So. Let me tell you what. I love my brother so much. And for eight years, I still cry about it. Yeah. Okay? And when you talk ill of my brother, I'm going to tell the truth about you because you lie about him. None of you are the man that the macho man... You could never be the man in the ring, on the microphone. If Let's say, listen, if Randy was on the microphone right now, you'd be having more fun than you're having right now. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Because he believed, and he didn't care if this is going to millions and millions of people or just the people in this room. Right. He was going to give you your show business. Right. And if you paid money to see him, he was going to give you your money's worth. Yeah. He took it very seriously. He said, if you don't 
give your best to these people, then you're no better than a shoplifter because they pay their money expecting professional show business and you're going to shortchange them? Fuck you. Yep. That's the way he was. Yep. And guess what? In Madison Square Garden, he wrestled just as hard in Paducah, Kentucky or Walla Walla, Washington. Why should I give less to the people just because they live in a small town? Right? Yep. Think about it. Yeah. He never would half-ass anything. He and not only that, yeah. he knew what outfit Elizabeth wore and what out outfit he wore, and he made sure that Scranton, Pennsylvania, CYC, never got to see the same outfit twice. Wow. How's that? Yeah, that's his thorough. Is that a professional? Yeah. And Starles, he used to get yes, there early. Fresh. He used to, and then, you know, he used to tan himself, and uh, right before the match, he applied baby oil, and Andre hated him for it. The baby oil. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> so wait a minute, so you, you, <laughs> We we heard Andre. that. I don't look. We heard the story, but what was it like in your house? You're hanging out with your brother. You guys are having a beer or whatever, and are you guys are you guys rapping about Andre? Like, is he telling you like, Lanny man, Andre just doesn't give me a break? Are you guys no, having no, these conversations? No. Here's what happened. Here's what happened. I said, Randy, why don't you make an exception for Andre and then wear your baby oil for everybody else? He says. Who the fuck you think you're talking to? <laughs> oh my he God. says, there's no exceptions. Oh, my God. Baby oil is my gimmick, just like Andre is a giant. Right. Mm. You know, he, he, he thought that was budget. part of, right. you know, he, he put a lot into this business. Okay, not just gambling his life with steroids when it was legal, but he used to go to the sunbed for one hour on the road. He owned a sunbed, and he would do one hour and a half at home. And then we lived in Florida, and he would go out in the beach for all hours. And then he owned a, he owned a condo on Treasure Island right on the beach, and he would be all day at the beach. And then finally, the dermatologist says, oh, you've got some precancerous cells on your face. You know, this is after he had quit the business. So he sold his condo, moved inland to Seminole, Florida, where he wore a hat to protect himself from the sun, you know, because they scared him. And uh, what I'm saying is he gave and gave and gave and gave to you, the fans. Understand? The fans. What? Uh, but you've given, you know, it, I don't want to make this about your brother. Right? I don't want to make it about you because, you know, you're you're a great man. We we enjoy you. We consider you a friend. You are, you are a Hall of Fame wrestler. You are a great wrestler. You come from a great wrestling family. How about what you've given? I feel like I feel like sometimes you shortchange yourself as a as I like told, comparison to I told your brother. A few hours ago, he's going to get that call from. Okay, Vince. I'll tell you Eventually. what. Let me tell you a nice story about me. Good, finally. Okay. Not, start once upon not a time. Not a penis story, please. please. Okay, <laughs> I had already been wished luck on my future endeavors. You know what that means? Yep, you're fired. Yes, I had already been fired, but I had three more weeks to fill. Okay, so. I am wrestling on a Friday in St. Louis at the Checker Dome where the St. Louis Blues used to play hockey. Are you familiar? Mm-hmm. Um, they don't play there anymore, I'll imagine, right? No. Okay, every, every place I ever wrestled has been demolished. Okay, so... The garden's still there. No, they, they did demolish They the redid garden. the garden. They didn't yeah. demolish it. They facelifted it. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. What's, what's still there? Madison, Madison Square, Square Garden. They've oh. just remodeled it. They haven't torn it down. Madison okay. So anyway, I wrestle in St. Louis, and I look at the booking sheet, and I said, well, I have a 6 o'clock flight tomorrow morning to go to Milwaukee for a 2 o'clock show, and then on to Madison, Wisconsin for an 8 o'clock show. It's a double shot. And then, I'm not going to exaggerate, I could see my hand in front of my face, <laughs> but it was very foggy. You know how people exaggerate the story? Yeah. Well, I put my hand in front of my face and I said, yes, I can see it. <laughs> but I don't think a plane can take off in such weather with such poor visibility. And I wouldn't want to be on a plane trying to take off in that kind of fog. So either way, I don't want to be on that plane. Either it's not going to take off. And I am not really a genius. I don't have a degree in meteorology. But I know that 
the St. St. Louis is right along the Mississippi River, and there's a lot of moisture in the air. And if there is fog, it's going to stay there until the sun burns through the fog. And it's not going to happen at 6 a.m. So I'm thinking that I'm not going to make it. And, oh, my father would roll in his grave if he thought I missed a booking. Mm. See what I mean? Yeah. So what I did... Now, every, the, all the other, there was about seven wrestlers in the same situation that were in St. Louis that were also going to um, Milwaukee and Madison, Wisconsin. So what I did was, but they were staying at the Acme Ritz Central Arms Waldorf Plaza and using $100 bills for toilet paper where I was going to stay at the Dew Drop Inn <laughs> and the Motel 6 mm. and the Scottish Inn. You know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> Did I say it right? How would you say it? Yeah, that sounded pretty. You good. know, I got the. Account. I was actually trying to think of how to say it in Scottish "bam bam bigelow" when I heard the um, the toilet paper. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> the you know, so so what happened? Dollar bill here. So so what I'm going to do? What I'm going to tell you is, I had Plan A and Plan B, and I was hoping Plan A would work. Plan A was go to the bus station, see if I can get a ticket to go to to go to Chicago and then Milwaukee. And I, plan A worked. So, thank God that I didn't have to get a rental car because I was exhausted. I felt as glamorous as a toad with a tire track down its back. Okay, so what I did, I rode on the bus to Chicago, switched, and went to Milwaukee, and I was the first person in the locker room. Hmm. The agent that night was Jack Lanza. And I told him, I said, I was in St. Louis. Seven other people were also going to be in Milwaukee. But I took the bus because I thought it would be foggy. And I have a hunch that they're not going to be here. So I want to be part of the solution. They'll be part of the problem. Mm -hmm. Your job is to put a show on that causes people not to get a refund. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. Then I shower. Well, what I kind of show did you put on? Was it just you and a couple guys? Or what was that like? It may not have been a good show, but at least it was a show. Okay. Okay. Show okay? And, you know, the worst thing you can do in promotion is uh, we're sorry, but these people were not going to be here tonight because, you know, they because it was fogged out in St. Louis. Well, yeah, they got fogged out. But the genius full of glory and renown got on the bu uh, 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 us. Right. And I'm not saying that in the, at the urine. If got here, you should get here. Well, and then when I get to Madison, Wisconsin, um, some of the people said, where the hell were you? And I said, I was in Milwaukee where you were supposed to be. Mm. Wow. See what I mean? Yep. Now, what does that say about me? Where that I made it? my shot. <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah. When, when Monty and the Pharaoh asked me to be on the show, mm -hmm. I said yes. Mm. You know why? Mm. Because last time I was here, I enjoyed the hell out of you guys. Well, thank you. I, ho I hope we're not failing this time. Yeah. No. Okay. You know what? You guys couldn't fail. Because you're too pro you're too professional, yeah, and you got personality. You could do a great curly. Yeah, do, yeah. do you? I'm yeah. trying to think, but nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I wanted to ask you while we have you here, and I, I got to ask you this: Do you think, because of your recent run with uh, Cody and and uh, the Young Bucks and Ring of Honor and stuff, now with what Cody is doing with all the lead with the Young Bucks, do you think they got a chance? of making it, like actually making this company succeed that they're trying to get off the ground? Because we know Vince is going to try his football thing, and I think we both agree that he's going to fail miserably. But do you think Cody, coming from Dusty's genetics and experience and a real wrestling family, you think he's got a shot here of doing something? He's partnered up with the okay. cons. That was about billionaires okay. and have more money than Vince. That was about three questions in a row. I understand. <laughs> okay, let's but take you're a genius. You should okay. be able to process let's, this accordingly. Let's take it let's let's take the answer one at a time. Okay. What did no, I ask? I forgot. Number one. Okay. <laughs> Vince McMahon going to fail miserably. <laughs> Vince McMahon mm. is just like Alexander the Great. Yes. He wept because yes, yes. he had no more worlds to conquer. Yes, yes, yes. Nothing challenges him anymore. He needs to succeed where he failed. Now, if you remember last time with the XFL, they got big ratings. 
on that. And then the next, the next week. week, and then they dug a hole. And, and then the season never ended. And next thing you know, they started panicking and started doing wrestling shtick. Right. And, you know, they were like, it was trouble. Yeah. Do I think he will succeed in football? I don't think there's a market for it. Mm. However, success is not in one day. Success is daily. Mm. And Vince McMahon is the most successful person I've ever met. Mm. And if anybody can do it, he can. He can. But unfortunately, he's a go-getter, but there's nothing to go and get. Okay? The football is... It's the NFL. The end. Yeah, it's the NFL. And... Um, you know, Colin Kaepernick almost killed it. He tried. It nice hurt. try. It hurt. He tried. He tried. Where's he now? What's oh, he doing? he's doing well with Nike. Yeah, what's he doing? doing? You know, he's yeah. he's doing okay. Is he? Yeah. Okay. You know, I think he's out of a career and no one wants to ever see him on the field again. But other than that, he did a good job. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. You know, uh, I was not a big fan. I would not take a knee. Yeah. For the for the national anthem. Not a big fan. And the red, white, and blue. My father would turn over in his grave yeah. and drop kick the hell out of all three of us. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I'm with you. Do you think the uh, the Poffo men have certain tendencies about themselves, strengths and weaknesses that you all have, or, you, or do you consider yourself completely different people? How similar are you to each other? It's a tough one. That's right? a good one. It is. I'm a pretty smart guy. Yeah, you're a pretty okay. fart smeller. The, uh, <laughs> okay, listen. It's a diet. Sorry. I'm going to have some cheesecake later. He's killing me. Oh, I okay. the cheesecake. He was asking about the cheesecake. When he got no, here. serious question, though. <laughs> uh, no, I, seriously. I want to I understand this. You know, how similar are the three of you at the end of the day? Okay. Randy was the alpha male. I was the beta male. But now that Randy's gone and my mom is gone and my dad is gone, I have become... The alpha male. And you know why? Because one eye is king in the valley of the blind. And if there's nobody to measure me against, I become the alpha male. And that's the reason, as we discussed last time, that is the reason that I had to put Randy in the Hall of Fame. Because the macho fan... We were talking about Star Trek, were we not? Yes. And what did Spock say in, in The Needs of the Many? Outweigh the needs of the few or the one. There you go. And you know what the many are? You are the many. The fans. Mm -hmm. You're better than the promoters. You're better than the wrestlers. The macho fans are millions. The macho man is just one. I could not punish you any longer. It's bad enough that Bruno San Martino, yeah. he got in the Hall Wait of Fame forever. after yeah. his fans were already dead and gone. Any thoughts on Bundy? Well, real, well, now real, that he's gone. Real quick, I don't want to get off. So you, should be you were an alpha around your brother. But do you consider yourself an alpha male outside of your brother? Ooh. So you're, you're in the locker room. We know you didn't like. You, I know you didn't like Bam Bam Bigelow, right? For a million and one reasons. Did you tell him? Were, were you the alpha around him and say, "I don't like you. This is what I think of you," or were you just like? Or would Randy be the type more likely to walk up and go, "You're a punk"? Randy would do that more than me. But did I tell you the story of the uh, what happened in the? Uh, I can't remember the locker room. But Bam Bam claimed that he was late because he received sexual oral favors from what he called an arena rat. I don't call them that. That is not a nice thing to say about anybody. I call them women mm -hmm. who are nice enough to um, <laughs> pleasure you. Uh, oh, my God. You know. You turned uh, them into a Hallmark card. Go on. No, really. That's you know, I, I feel gratitude for this. Uh, well, I would, too, if I were you. Don't you know, uh, back when I was in high school, an oversensitive boy with a bad complexion, I didn't know that I would get into a <laughs> wrestling business mm. where I could say, I'll take you, 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 and everybody can go home. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, that's like, I went from very big... Thank you, God! <laughs> I went from supply to demand. Right, you know? that's, yeah. that's nice. So, oh, yeah. uh, was, it was, like every, like, was it like every night? What was that like, by the way, the first time? Well, let me just go back to Bam Bam. <laughs> All right, okay. He comes in the locker room, and, the rest, and by that time, nobody liked him. Okay, he comes in and says... How would he have an arena, whatever you called it anyway, Bam Bam? What's that? Ugh. An arena rat? rat would want to hang out with Bam Bam? Because people like famous people. Bam Bam? He says, 
And the reason I was late is I was getting a blowjob from an arena rat. And I said, did you keep the receipt? Oh. <laughs> Hello. I'm selling for the camera. Oh, oh. Nice. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. And he said, what do you, and everybody starts laughing at him. Right. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, Bam Bam, you are a very ugly man. <laughs> and the only way I can fathom that a woman would disgrace herself to pleasure you is that you gave her a hell of a lot of money. Wow. Now, those fighting words. That, you know, yeah, that, he like, says, that, well, that's he, like, so I want to fight you words. That's like, Absolutely. I want to I fight you words. Yeah, yeah. well, then, then he bowed up at me. Oh, and I okay. said... How could you tell? He's so round. And I, I said, <laughs> say goodbye to your patella, motherfucker. Uh, interesting. And, and what, a patella, you what's your patella? Is the knee. Yeah. That's what I do to fat guys. Kick him in the knee. Um, oh, wait, I'm going to make a note of that. The table. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Kick in knee. Okay. And then you follow up with a barrage of So what was his quickness. response to you when you said that to him? What's that? What For, well, the, the wrestlers were laughing at him. Mm. You know, and uh, but you know who could do that better than any wrestler ever in the Battle of Wits? Billy Jack Haynes? Bobby the Brain Heenan. Oh, yeah. nice. I knew better. And to when Bobby the Brain Heenan would I laugh at me, I just laughed at I just laughed at myself, because if I were to even try to say something, Bobby. he would chop me up like a vegematic. Mm. And uh, oh my God, I gotta say something nice about Bobby Heenan. Is it okay? Why certainly, yeah. When they made me the genius, I felt kind of guilty that I was stealing his gimmick as the brain. It's a little close, genius brain. A little okay. close, a little close. Okay, I see. But he wasn't managing at the time. He was broadcast journalism. So I went up to Bobby Heenan. You know, what a man. I love him. He said, I don't want to get emotional. He's not with us anymore. But I said, Bobby, they're going to make me the genius. Give me a break as a heel. I said, but I feel not too good about it because you're the brain if I'm the genius that's a little bit of copyright infringement so I'm asking you permission would you mind if I was the genius he says Lanny first of all thank you for asking secondly if I had 22 inch arms I wouldn't be the brain I'd be the arms mm -hmm. he says and thirdly I am so glad that you're finally getting a break here he says, and, and I'll even offer this. If you're willing, I will advise you and give you any constructive criticism I can possibly give you to help make it easier for you to succeed. And damned if he didn't. Wow. And you know what? I, you want to know why I'm the genius? Because I was smart enough to listen to Bobby the Brain. Because he's the greatest of them all, and everybody knows it. So, good point. Did your brother have those attributes about listening? Or was he strong, you know, set on his own ways? So you've seen someone that takes criticism, tries to improve themselves. Was your brother such an alpha male that he couldn't take criticism? Besides your father, was there anyone he went to for advice? What Randy would do, like, you were talking about what a great match it was with the ultimate warrior against the macho man. It wasn't Randy's greatest match, but it was Warrior's greatest match. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what he did is get the videos, and back in the day they had video, now things magically appear on your phone, okay? Get a VHS tape or something and study Yes, it. that's what we had back then. Okay. He looked at Warriors matches, and he didn't have to write it down, he was brilliant, he had a razor blade brain. And he made a mental note of everything Warrior did well, and everything Warrior did below average. This is great. So he made sure that when Warrior was, and this is, I'm telling you, in Wembley Stadium, and they had a hell of a match. Mm -hmm. And that's one of my greatest poems in my, my uh, genius career. I'll tell you that later. But what happened was he made sure that Warrior got to do everything he was good at, and he built the match around the limits of the Warrior. Right. You know, there were some things Warrior did very well. <clears throat> run to the rope, run to the ring with his muscles, shake the ropes, do the thing, you know, lift him high in the... Th mm -hmm. I'm telling you, 
Um, and Randy went out there to have the best match he could. And and you know who else did that night? Brett versus Davy Boy. Yeah. That's a great match. You better believe it. Yeah. Great match. Now, the best poem, I was there early, and this is before Google, which made it easier for the genius. Okay? I'm thinking to myself, boy, I'm here early, and I got this poem I'm going to do for the Beverly Brothers. And it sucks because here I am. I'm in Wembley, and I know this is a famous arena. Well, I'm going to go upstairs, walk around until I meet somebody that tells me what is so great about this arena. Well, I didn't have to. As soon as I got up to the box office location, I saw a plaque. And it said, all the history of Wembley Stadium. Mm -hmm. And then I go and I give this interview from the home of the Olympic Games of 1948 to the World Cup of 1966. I know the date. Now it's SummerSlam in Wembley, and the genius holds the key. Behold, the future champions, the brothers Beverly. See, isn't that more interesting? Because I gave you a synopsis yep. of how proud I am to be in Wembley. Right. You know, near London. Right. It's, um, and by the way, you're talking about Michael Jackson. Mm. He, he sold it out. A two bunch. nights, right. two nights in a row, right. and many every time he went in there, sold it out. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, someone it's Michael. being great at what they do doesn't make him a good human being, right? Well, in Michael's yeah. case, mm, no, no, in a lot of people's cases, that's true too. You that's know? true too. Uh, but, on the subject you of know, managers, you brought up Bobby the, uh, Heenan before. I wanted to ask you if you have, would you ever consider being a manager? If the phone rang, I would consider being okay. a manager. You're listening, Vince. Okay, I was just curious. Any any kind you'd like to uh, anybody out there that you've seen that maybe you'd like to manage? No, um, I believe in who signs my check is whose praise I sing. Damn straight. And whoever needed a manager, I would be very happy to offer my services. However, um, thanks to thrifty living and careful planning, mm -hmm. I never have to leave the house anymore. There you go. But rather than just breathe in and out, I enjoy. Going out there, meeting the new guys. Having good pizza in New York. Yes, and thank you for that. Oh, you're quite welcome. It's better than that good other move, guy. Good Bart, man. What is that other guy? I don't know. Spanky? No, who's that? Frankie? Other? Who's that real bit? Frankie. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. 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 Oh, he his, knows it's it. Yeah. yeah. His. Yeah. I try to keep forgetting, but yeah. Yeah, what about him? What about it? <laughs> his pizza... Like Jim, Jim the Pharaoh hates Frankie. His pizza oh, has already... Mike loves him even more than I do. Frankie's pizza has already been through the horse. Oy. Oh, Wilbur! Oy. <laughs> Holy Mister Dead! Blech. So, how did you how did you like uh, announcing matches? How did you think you did? I did my best. Probably wasn't good enough, but I did my best. Why do you say it wasn't good enough? Oh, a couple of couple of dirt sheets. I under I heard uh, that uh, Meltzer didn't like it, and I heard a few people didn't like it. But that's all right. So Tell me how that feels. You're a famous guy. People critique your work. What? How does like does that sit with you, or you just brush it off? Got to be used to it. How, how does how does it feel? Okay, he might have been right. Okay, maybe I didn't pronounce the Japanese names quite the way I should have. Maybe I don't understand the product. So let's just say, if Meltzer didn't like me, he might have had a point. So let's just leave it at that. But as far as New Japan Pro Wrestling. I love all the wrestlers, and I love all the promoters. Mm. And if we never meet again, they don't owe me a penny. I had a great vacation. I enjoyed the hell out of it. How many people go to Japan? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How many people have ever been to Japan? And how many people have ever been to Japan for free? Mm -hmm. And how many people have ever been to Japan for free and made money doing it and had a tour guide? Mm -hmm. So... Um, and I'll tell you what, Kevin Klein, the announcer, he did nothing but break his back trying to help me, trying to get me oh, over. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. Kevin Kelly from Ring of Honor. I'm Japan. sorry, Kevin yeah, Kelly. Yeah, yeah, I know you're speaking. Kevin He's Kelly. Good. He's very good. What a fantastic guy. He's very good. He even went out of his way to make me look good, and uh, I did my best. I, I thought you did an outstanding job, and again, being new to it, sometimes you got to give people time to breathe. Just like Renee Young 
give her some time. Oh my to god, breathe. she's getting years. Okay, I, and why should Meltzer give, is got a got Meltzer doesn't work for New Japan. Who gives a crap what Meltzer? You got to give people an opportunity I, to Meltzer. grow into a role, right? Even when you start wrestling, you, I feel you should have been afforded more time to get more familiar with the product. And I don't understand why Meltzer, who doesn't even work for the company, why his opinion is a be all end all. He's a big jackass. Anyway, that's my take on that one. Well, I did my best, and I forgot the rest. So, so my memories of New Japan, very, very positive. And uh, if if they've got better talent to give the English commentary, then I'm, then I'm glad for them. But I'm also glad that at least I was there. At least yeah. I got to drink the sake. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> sake. Absolutely. I wanted to ask you, were you surprised at the pop you got when you did do the all-in event? You got a big pop out there with Lethal. Were you surprised at that? I See, I still think you're a great fit for that company it's in some faction, form or faction, but what was your feelings when you heard the pop that night? Well, first of all, what really meant a lot to me was the Young Bucks. They asked me... Mike's poli- favorite tag team. Go on. They asked me politely if I would be in there being the elite show. And I said, I would love to be in your show. Well, would you mind doing this, this, and this, and that? And I said, hey... I am coming to you directly from the couch. I am very happy to be active. So I will do anything you ask me to the best of my ability. And so we went out there, look it up. Um, Episode 101 premiere, Being the Elite. We had a little skit um, between, um, you know, some of the uh, hangman page uh, marking out for me making some joke and I took it the wrong way and then we banged the door and uh, Jay Lethal fall down and goes, brother? You know, it was really funny. I thought it was funny. Yeah. I th- and we only did you one. You can custom into being uh, yeah. his flat pers- his macho persona. He also does flair too, this guy. Wow, Lethal does a lot of guys funny. Woo! I can't do flair. Yeah. Woo! He does a great flair, Lethal. Yeah, he's a, Lethal is a great worker. He's amazingly talented. How do you feel about him uh, main eventing at MSG this weekend? I'm proud of him. This is amazing. By the way, Mikey, this is the first non-WWF event at the Garden in what, 60 years? I think since, it's huge. Since that's Jack a, Pfeffer. That's incredible. I think it's the uh, the Lanny Poffo factor, man. A guy touches you and you turn to gold. Is that you know? what happened? He rubbed so. off on no, them? That was the minute you let came just, on this show, we became majorly popular. Let me just say something about the Young Bucks. Jay Lethal, about two days before, said, look, I don't know if I can get you on the card, but I've got an idea that you can walk out with me and do something. He says, how are you about buying your own plane ticket and getting your own hotel room? I said, I can do that. And, um, okay, so I got my own plane ticket, got my own hotel room, but I never expected to be paid or reimbursed. I just thought it was just rolling the dice. Okay. I'm from Chicago. It would be great to end my career there. That's what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. So I go there, and Jay says I can walk him out and get involved in the finish and do a little something. Mm. But I never thought they'd try to reimburse me. I was there for me. And I wasn't advertised. I didn't draw one ticket. I didn't sell one thing. You know, I was a surprise. Mm-hmm. Even the whether you know this guy or don't, whether you want to see him or not, here he is anyway. <laughs> so uh, that's great. So so I go out there, and then you know I go home, and then I get a letter from the young bucks with a check in the mail, and it is more money than I spent on the plane ticket, more money than I spent on the Uber. Mm. And more than I spent in the hotel rooms. Cha-ching. And I'm thinking in a generous, handsome payoff that I certainly did not deserve. So when we talk about all the wrestlers that don't have any credibility or, um, you know, what do you call some of these, once you lose your integrity, the rest is easy. Mm-hmm. Mm. And you can count on one hand the people that have integrity in this business, the young bucks. I take my hat off to you. I don't, I'm not wearing a hat, but if I'm wearing my cap and gown, I would take that off. And I would say, thank you, and I wish you nothing but the greatest success because you guys 
might be the most exciting tag team in the world ever. Wow. They've wow. done quite well. Lanny, Lanny, recently there was, um, and the timing's interesting because we have WrestleMania coming up this weekend, and also 350 Days has been released this weekend, you know, highlighting the uh, <laughs> plight of wrestlers and the kind of lives they are forced to live or have to live or choose to live, depending on whatever way you want to f- phrase that. But uh, John Oliver was recently on a show and uh, basically really destroyed Vince McMahon and his lack of care for wrestlers. Any thoughts on that? Were you aware of that? Have you heard it? He did a, a what was he, HBO, Mike? Help me out a little bit with this fella. But it's all over the internet, and he's been really destroying Vince McMahon. Any thoughts on uh, what Vince should be doing for these guys and what Vince doesn't obviously do for these guys to take care of them? Okay, I was in the wrestling business for 13 years before I met Vince McMahon. I was in the territories. Mm-hmm. Sometimes somebody's territory, sometimes my own territory, one-third promotion. And I can honestly say that the best eight years of my career were because of Vince McMahon signing the check. Okay? Okay. And I, I think I've said this before, but who's, who signs my check is whose praise I sing. Mm-hmm. Now, because you're a, not an employee, but an independent contractor, you have to know that if you treat your money like Ric Flair, confetti, whoo, whatever, I can't imitate him. And then the, at the end of the year, the government says pay your taxes, and you say I'm Flair, the government says, I don't care. <laughs> okay? And the same thing happened to Willie Nelson. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter how much water you put in the bucket. If there is a hole in the bucket, <laughs> you're going to be broke. Mm-hmm. And uh, listen to Dave Ramsey. Ever hear of him? Check it out. Honestly, look at Dave Ramsey. Get the book, The Richest Man in Babylon. Don't have to get the book. Go on YouTube. There it is. An actor will read it to you. So I'm just saying, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness. Pat Patterson had the temerity to insinuate that my father was very thrifty or whatever the words he used. But you know what? You compare my father to Bam Bam Bigelow. My father came out of the Depression. My father worked his ass off with my mother. They were married 61 years, separated by death. That is a record Randy didn't beat. That is a record I'm not going to Mm. beat. Okay, this, these were better people. This was the greatest generation. And then I said violin, and my father buys me an imitation Stradivarius. I say photography, my father buys me a Nikon F with five lenses and a Durst M600 and larger for my dark room in the basement. Do you understand what I'm saying? My father denied himself pleasures so he could provide necessities and luxuries. Randy and I were raised in the lap of luxury. We were raised in abundance. My father was raised in scarcity. My mother was raised in scarcity. They were determined to give Randy and I a better life. And I am very, very appreciative to a man who denied himself little pleasures on the road so he could bring it home and give us a great life. And uh, my father... Now you compare that to Bam Bam Bigelow, who feathered himself with the finest frivialities, ate the finest food, drank the finest whatever, and then if you look in the Wikipedia, Bam Bam Bigelow, his wife had to sue him for non-payment of child support. So which one is cheap, Bam Bam or my dad? There is no comparison there has never been a comparison. Don't you dare even compare them. Any thoughts on, because every year, Mike, we know about this, we, there's always a, uh, a rumor that Bam Bam is going to make it into the Hall of Fame. I'm sure he will. You, do you think he deserves it? Yes. You do? Okay, I was just curious as to what your take was on Bam yes, Bam. Yes, uh, I'm going to tell you why. Because just because I don't like him doesn't mean that he sucked as a wrestler. Mm-hmm. Am I right? I agree. I think Bam Bam is okay. a Hall of Famer. I agree. Why don't you ch- take a look at his match with Lawrence Taylor? Oh, yeah. And then you tell me if Bam Bam deserves to be in the awesome. Hall of Fame. Awesome. The answer is yes. Will I induct him if they paid me? 
Yeah. Right. Because I'm a whore. That would and be And if the price is right, I'll be there tonight. <laughs> and I won't say anything derogatory because gotcha. it isn't the time or the place. Gotcha. You know, I could have said a lot of... Like now. I could have said a lot of this crap in the Hall of Fame speech. Yeah. But it wasn't the time or the place. No. Mm-hmm. Plus... It's a celebration, right? Plus, look, you're, you're sitting there. Vince was sitting just there in the other room. And he could have Forrest Gumped my sound. Yeah, sure. If I would have started in on that. But so, you know, we you, you, you kind of jumped ahead, right? So your point is, is that no one's owed anything. You get paid, you sign an agreement, and when it's over, it's over, and you better have saved your money, and if you didn't, too bad. I'm telling you that Vince McMahon, even sucking hind tit on the sow, if that's a farmer's expression, Mm -hmm. you know? In other words, even when I was just working the prelims. Yeah. And before Hulk Hogan saw something in The Genius and gave me four months of main events, twice in Madison Square Garden. I made 23 appearances in Madison Square Garden. Twice I was in the main event at Madison Square Garden. And for a man like me with selective amnesia, this is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, thank you, Vince McMahon, for all you've done for Lanny effing Pafo. And you know what? The only thing that counts is what the bank teller counts. There you go. Any thoughts on this year's Hall of Fame class? We've got uh, Honky Tonk Man. Any thoughts I believe that? Honky Tonk Man deserves it because he is, I am an entertainer. Oh, he sure was. And you better believe it. You paid to see the Honky Tonk Man. He didn't leave until you got your money's worth. Brutus, well, Brutus the Barber. Real ball. quick, what, sure. was, what was the greatest title in wrestling in your mind? What's your... What do, you, what do you think is the most important title? Obviously, the Poet Laureate of the WWF. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> the what? Did you ever want a title, like a major title? Like, was that something that was a goal of yours? Did I want a title? Yeah. Yes. Did, Did you, you want to be strap? intercontinental champion? Did you want to be, the want to be a champion? champion? Did you want to be a tag team I champion? Want this belt. And were they important to you in your mind, or were they just like, ah, whatever, it doesn't really matter? Count out. I want to pin Hogan. Um, <laughs> when I was a boy, a bashful boy, dreaming of fame and glory, um, yeah, I thought about wearing the belt. There you go. Okay. But as we get older, and I had a wife and a daughter, and now I have a divorce mm-hmm. and a daughter, yeah. and my daughter has a fine husband, and I am a grandfather, oh. and maybe one on the way, who knows? Okay. Shh. Oh, sh- okay, and very quiet. Don't uh, <laughs> don't add this into the uh, you know into the internet. I mean, keep it for the show, but don't let it spread gotcha. because I don't want to get in hot water. Gotcha. Because she's a very very private person. No, you're supposed to prepare hot water, not get into it. Yes. So um, <laughs> when I got practical, I said, "Life is a shit sandwich. Eat it or starve." <laughs> like, see, why if, am I not hungry? <laughs> see, if you paid me, if you paid me enough money. If you paid me enough money, yeah, I would eat a pizza at Frankie's. You would even induct Bam really? Bam, so I'm not that surprised. Oh my God, that's a glowing, minute, that's that a glowing endorsement right Bam there. Bam. It'd have to be a lot of money. You know, Man. Did Randy ever want I... to be a father? Ooh. Ooh. Randy Good was question. a father of all of the Special Olympians. I, okay. no, I got it. Okay. He, since, he was, since he had no biological children of his own. Did he ever share with you, though? Like, you know, I wish I had had a kid, maybe. Any, anything? Anything? Like that, maybe. Okay, that is too private. If yes, okay, okay, okay. Good enough. Fair if, enough. If, if um, Fair enough. Fair enough. If that were true, I don't think now is the time. Gotcha. However, I can just say this: because he had no biological children of his own, he was the father to all those wonderful, beautiful, oh, yeah. special Olympians, mm. countless, right? and they loved him too. I bet. And you know what? They knew who he was. <laughs> Oh yes, How can you not? and he always dressed. And one time, everyone knows who. One is. time, you know Sue Aitchison's getting in the Hall of Fame, and she's the one that always made sure that this was there and that was there. And she's a wonderful person. But one time, through no fault of her own, the music didn't come. Bum 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 right, bum, right, bum, yeah. bum bum bum. Randy says, "What the hell's going on? <laughs> we need the music to go on." Yeah. But that was back in the day of cassette. Right. Okay. okay. <laughs> you know, okay, yeah. And it wasn't yeah, always yeah. H-Rock. You know, you didn't have this uh what you know, you phone you know, you digital. Yeah, yeah digital. Yeah. Yeah. Push yeah. Button. So 
Skype. So Randy pitched a that too. Randy pitched a fit, and somebody said, "Well, it got over anyway." He says, "Just because it's the Special Olympics doesn't mean they don't deserve the same show business that everybody else gets." There you wow. go. There oh you yes, go. he was angry. All right. So last time you were here, we kind of went over. We kind of skipped over it. I don't know if you want to talk about this because you, you mention it, but you really just Bubba the Love Sponge. Yes. You said he had a lot to say in the last interview. You said he had a lot to say about your. Randy, your family. Uh, okay, wait you, a minute. Can you elaborate on that? I heard that he used to be the big deal in Tampa. Now I think he's falling off the Well, list. he's just sitting there Darn begging Howard Stern rats. for a job on a regular Too basis. Bad. But, so sad. But I never listened, and okay. I was shocked to hear you say that. So See, I listen to music that sparks joy in my life, okay? I listen to... Slayer? What? Metallica? <laughs> Iron Maiden? Judas Priest? I'm kidding. You, he's the Broadway man. That's his deal. Broadway musicals, he's Frank Sinatra, Broadway. Dean Martin, Broadway Peggy man. Lee. There you go. He's the um, music man. Yes. That's right. Um, so I um, never listened to Bubba, but what I understand was he trashed Randy every day on the radio. He trashed my mom, my dad, what? anybody that he could. And I chose, I always heard about it. Hey, did you hear what Bubba said about your family and all this stuff? And my way of don't even ignore him, you know he's a <laughs> don't even ignore him. That's you awesome. know what I mean? It's like yes, I do. I got <laughs> yes, I do. You know, there's gonna be um, so what it is. I, I forgot the question, but um, Bubba doesn't even get my middle finger. Okay, okay. good enough. F- fair enough. If I can continue to ask you your thoughts on the Hall of Fame class. Brutus the Barber Beefcake just got announced. Any thoughts on Brutus? He deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Okay. Memories of him as a person, if you have any? I like everything about him except one thing. What you got? Him. Him. <laughs> no, oh he, he goes on interviews like this and uh, <laughs> speaks and tells lies about my brother, lies about me. Another one? Yes. Another one? Yeah. Okay. You lie about me, I tell the truth about you. Okay. But good luck in the Hall of Fame. You certainly deserve it. Well, fair enough, fair enough. Thoughts on DX, Degeneration X. I know it was after your time, but the thoughts on DX, any chance, uh, Triple H? And how about China? China's now getting in. She's I getting wish, in directly, but she's I getting in. I wish China would have got in the Hall of Fame while she was alive to enjoy Did you get to meet her? And I wish Jim the Anvil Neidhart right. would have been in the Hall of Fame while he was alive to enjoy it. Because Neidhart is a great promo. Mm-hmm. He should have got the mic and made one last promo. Mm-hmm. He deserved it. Memories of China? Did you ever have any? Uh, one I met her China? one year before she died. Okay. And I thought she was very, very lovely. But for a girl that used to press lamb men, and I, and I hugged her, and she was leaning on me, and I knew that if I had said ole, she would have fell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I hate drugs. Whatever she was doing, whatever shortened her life, I am very, very sorry. But I understand she was a wonderful woman, and she certainly was a tremendous athlete and a great credit to wrestling, and she deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Yep, first well, ballad. Besides your brother, besides Hulk Hogan, besides your father, could you give us a name of a wrestler that you were around that you just loved, was a great human being? Well, about, I thought you were going to ask me who should be in the Hall of Fame that isn't. No, there's uh, a list. That list okay. is a mile long. Yeah. First, for one thing, uh, Bundy just passed away. Mm-hmm. Why not Bundy? He was good enough to headline WrestleMania. If you two. if you main event the WrestleMania, you should be in the Hall of Fame. And, and, and not only yeah. just main event it, he did a hell of a job oh, main eventing it. Man. One of my favorite matches of all time. You Love better believe match. it. And Love if you don't believe match. me, go look at it again. People okay? may forget too. He transcended. He was on Married with Children. He was he was. And I got a word out. And I got a little. Time. I have another rhetorical question for you. Sure. If you're talking about the WWE Hall of Fame, where the hell is Rick Martel? Oh please, I've been saying that forever. I've been saying that forever. By the way, I want to get your opinion on it. I know we spoke about it in the car, but they seem to have a um, like a legacy section now. And Mike, I don't know if you're aware of this, but they, this year they're putting in, and it's done so quietly you wouldn't even they, know. They've been doing it for the last couple right. of years. Right. Bruiser Brody, Wahoo McDaniel, S.D. Jones, uh-huh. Luna Vachon, Toro Tanaka, Buddy Rose. Playboy Buddy Rose. Any thoughts on these names and, and, and your feelings on how they're handling this special little legacy section? That Vince is doing. At least they're getting honorable mention. Yeah. Right. And right. they're all deceased. Where's the building? Can we have a building? Any thoughts on that one? 
Well, that's not my place, but it's going to be in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, where a tree grows. No, it's going to be <laughs> the ceremony. Right. A tree grows in Brooklyn? Yeah, I think that was a book. <laughs> yeah. I'm fairly sure. Yeah. I want to go back to Martell. Why are you so high on Rick Martell? I'm a big fan of Rick Martell, oh, so I I'm not disagreeing did. with you. I'm just asking why. Why is Martell in your line of fire that you feel so strong about him being Because his in? credentials far surpass many that are already in. Fair enough. Anybody that is in that you've... Oh, this is putting you on the spot. Anybody in that made you shake your head and go, why are they in? No, nobody... Hasn't happened yet? It hasn't happened yet, and I'll tell you why. Anybody that paid the price to gamble their life on airplanes, gamble their life in the ring, reach some type of renown, and it may not be my favorite, but it might be yours... Because if everybody was alike, yeah. we'd all live at your house. That's right. A lot of people deserve to be in a Hall of Fame. And I think there should be a special wing of the Hall of Fame that you should put Hulk Hogan, The Rock, Stone Cold, Macho Man, yeah. people of that caliber. Yes. What would you call that wing? Mount Rushmore. Mm. Well, that's interesting. And not just four guys. But I mean... The what is your Mount... I want to know your Mount Rushmore of wrestlers is. Well... It would have to be, my, my way to judge it, would be people that have escaped the microcosm of wrestling and branched out into the stratosphere of real life. And the number one man, whether you like it or don't like it, is Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. You can't take that away from him. Nope. Okay, and I certainly believe Stone Cold is another one. Absolutely. Where do you I, place a guy like Chris Jericho, who's done a pretty good job? He damn sure, he just signed... With Sony Music. I know. I heard. Yep. So you put him there too. This guy has really. He put is an up. amazing talent, mm -hmm. and he keeps reinventing himself. Yep. I was. I watched in Osaka. This guy tore the house down. Yep. You know what? He's getting older. Yep. He's not as old as me. And he's still finding a way to repackage himself every time. And you know what? Some people are jealous of him. I would believe so. Guess what? <laughs> If I were the jealous type, You'd my brother's the macho man. My mm. liver would have fallen out years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, the thing is, now when somebody's great and somebody makes it in this business, I'm happy for them. And, and especially when you look at Chris Jericho, he's not a big man. Nope. But his talent is huge. Oh, my God. His so you've presence got to, is, a, is a 10. You, Manny and the Pharaoh, you've got to give it to him. Yep. We've, yep. Got, we've got to say this is the great man. Yep. I'm not going to make myself a big deal by diminishing him. I'm going to say I don't knock success. Chris Jericho, good for you. And mm. more to you. Because, man, I saw you in Osaka. Huh. He tore the house down as a villain. And the people love to hate him. Mm. Who impressed you over in Japan as far as other wrestlers when you were just there recently? Besides the obvious ones that we know about, Jericho, Omega, was there anyone else? The chair. I never saw an empty one. <laughs> there you okay. go. There you okay. go. And polite, too. All filled with polite people. Well, they just want to enjoy it. Right. And I don't know is why... Is it true that it's on the back page, like the sports wrestling over there? Is it, I wouldn't is it know. With that? I wouldn't know. I didn't much look respect? At, I didn't look at the newspaper. I don't know. Mm -hmm. What I do know is they filled up every arena I was in, and they faced the ring, and they didn't make a lot of noise, but they applauded. See, they just applaud. Mm -hmm. They're a polite country. Mm -hmm. They don't throw things. Well, actually, they do throw things, those little... <laughs> yeah, the streamers. Yeah, give I me a you. give me a day in the life of Lanny Poffo. What what's your life now like? What do you, what do you like to do? What's your day? Okay, like? well today was forget a about this. today was a travel day. Yeah. Okay, but on the days that I don't have to do anything, I do nothing. Okay, I believe of ten hours of sleep, followed by fourteen hours of relaxation every Man, single sign day. Me up. <laughs> I want it. You writing a book about this? <laughs> No, I'll I'm reading it. books about it. They, oh, there you go. He's studying it. Mm -hmm. Where wow. do you think, I have to ask this, where do you think your brother would have been as far as the wrestling scene now? Would he have been at the front of the charge helping the Bucks to take down Vince? Or would he would have been like, you know, Vince, you better better be careful. You know, how do you think, where do you think Randy would have been with the support of independent wrestling versus 
Vince's product and his loyalties to Vince, maybe perhaps, or not loyalties. Where do you think he would have been right now with the way the scene is? I'm going to just weigh in here. I, I still I disagree with Farrell all the time about this. There's there's no taking down the WWE. It's never going to happen. I didn't say that it could it's happen. It's the NFL I, that it to will even happen. attempt to challenge it. You just got to grab your own little piece and try to make as much money as you can doing it. It doesn't even make sense to me. But And I feel uh, that the cons, with all their billions of dollars, there's a shot here. If it's done correctly with Cody and the Young Bucks, there's a chance. Okay, here's what I wish. Never mind what I think. Mm -hmm. Because what I think is as good as what you think. We could be wrong. You're right. Okay, there's there's nobody. Can anybody judge the future? No. Okay, but here's what I hope happens. I hope Vince McMahon succeeds with XFL. Mm. I hope he succeeds with WWE. I hope A&E. AEW. I'm sorry. A and W. A and E's doing great with The Walking Dead, but that's a different yeah. company. Go on. I hope A and W <laughs> succeed, <laughs> and I hope Ring of Honor succeeds, yeah. and I hope every Middlesex village and farm has a wrestling company that also succeeds. Uh-huh. Look at you. Because it gives wrestlers Monty and the Pharaohs backyard wrestling. That's, yeah, that's coming. It gives. Is it really? Uh, well, we're thinking about it, but first we have to figure out if we have a backyard we can afford. <laughs> it gives wrestlers more opportunities. To make a living and, God yeah. forbid, a fortune. Mm. Yeah. Nothing but positivity, my friend. Nothing but positivity. Well, well, you know, Must have been the pizza. Why would why would I... Yeah, because it wasn't Frankie, thank you. <laughs> well, well, look, you know, Lonnie, to be honest with you, okay, this is a trait that your parents have handed down to you. Look, I'll talk about myself, right? I, I get jealous on a regular basis. I always want more, and I'm, you know, when someone's got more than me, I always want to get more and take more so you know definite weakness in myself so I'm you know um, I respect what you're saying I'm impressed and you know not that I want to see people fail but I want to see myself succeed more than I want other people to succeed well more than one person can sit at the banquet this is true so if everybody eats everybody's happy let's not be you know like like a Roman uh you got to win them all. You can't be happy if unless everybody dies around you. You see what I mean? It's like the last. Like when you cut that guy off at the buffet table and we don't have him, let him go. have a single plate. Well, speaking of that, so when <laughs> Vince was taking over all these territories, your father, how did he feel about that? Did he feel like Vince was trying to eat everything or was he okay with it and understood what it was business? He understood what was business. And actually, Ole Anderson was, he just, Vince just succeeded at the very thing Ole Anderson was trying to do. Yeah, so you just got that got the jump on him. Just got the jump on him. And now, how did you know Oli was trying to do that? It's a known fact. Yeah, thoughts on Oli? You have to get old, but you do not have to get Oli. <laughs> oh my God, man, boy, everybody hates Oli. Oh, yeah, Oli's not too popular wow. from what we hear. From wow. What we hear. So why? Us- why? Yeah. Why? I'm not looking for dirt. I just want to understand. Well, why. He may be, but that's cool. He does Fair not enough. spark joy in a locker room. He does not spark joy anywhere. See, I'm a Marie Kondo guy. You know who she is? Okay, look her up. Marie Kondo is the tidy... I could, but I can't get is the girl service. That, he's a, she's a Japanese girl that knows how to tidy up. So you throw away everything in your house that doesn't spark joy. So I did. And she teaches you how to fold clothes and how to hang and how oh, to do this. Oh, I actually know and, who this is now. Yes. Yeah, okay, okay. And then, so what I do it, I... I got rid of everything in my house that didn't spark joy. I folded just like she taught me to do. I sorted. I organized. Mm-hmm. I did everything I'm supposed to do. And twice a month, a cleaning lady comes by for just the cleaning part, uh, the ninja cleaning. I do the cleaning for the other 14 days, mm-hmm. and she does the ninja cleaning. So my place is always showroom fresh. Nice. Uh, I like that. Yes, but look her up. Marie Kondo, she's Japanese, and she has a Japanese girl with her to help translate. But, uh, Ichini Sanchigo, Rokalichi Hachiku Jui. Gesundheit. Como se llama? Estas bien, gracias, y usted? Uh, un poco. You studio dos años en la escuela de español. Uh, no habla. No habla. Hago si eres tú. What just happened? I speak heavy metal. Right. Lanny, seriously though, I, uh, you are one impressive human being. I'm glad that we got to meet you, and I'm glad Again. you 
you know, I just I'm just impressed by the human being that you are. I really Let me am. tell you something, brother. You guy, brother. <laughs> what you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, before you say anything, like, you know, we have a lot of radio shows on this, right? We have B celebrity radio stars and a lot of them all full of themselves and they all think there's something special. You are actually a real star. You know what I mean? And it's like to be as uh I don't know, give me a word. You just you're so humble. You're humble, you're a good human being. Grounded. I mean, I listen to this I listen to these crappy shows regularly every day and it's like these people are so full of themselves. I'm just like I'm humbled by like just just the person you are. I'm just I'm just I'm totally impressed. How do you keep yourself in check too with the kind of success you've had to not walk around with a swelled head as we see so many unknown fatheads walking around? How do you keep how do you keep yourself in check? Something terrible happened to me when I was twelve years old. Oy. I'm in Hawaii. You got a blowjob? <laughs> when you was 12? I'm sorry. Dude. <laughs> I had to leave it. Anyway, come out go of the ahead. gutter. Go, ahead. go, go on. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm in Waikiki Beach in Hawaii. Right in front of the Royal Hawaiian Hotel is Art Linkletter. At least it wasn't Patterson. Blowjob. Go on. <laughs> go ahead. Art, wait a minute. Art, the Art Linkletter. Yes. The Art Linkletter. Okay, I'm impressed. So go I live on. on 429 Connie Kapolei. I run home, get a pen, get a pad, and I go over there. I say, Mr. Linkletter, would you please sign my autograph? Oh, and he doesn't even look at me. He says, fuck off. I, no way. <laughs> and I had never heard those oh two God. words together in my life. Right. But the tone of his voice told me this was a terrible thing to say to me. Yeah. And it hurt. I'll tell you how much it hurt. All these years later, here I was 12 then, I'm 64 now. Do the math. Yeah. Uh. It still hurts me to yeah. remember it. Yeah. Wow. So when I started wrestling... And that prick came across like Mr. Brady, that guy. You just ruined him for me. I'm always going to look at him like a douchebag now. Good job, Lenny. So when I, I wrestled my first match, and a, a kid about 12 comes up to me and says, May I have your autograph? No. And I said, no. Why? He said, Oh, I just wrestled. Oh. I said, Okay, what's your name? And whatever his name was, I signed it. And I, I said, Thank you. He says, thank you to me. I said, no, thank you. You're mm. my first autograph of my life. Mm. Wow. And I said, I made his day. Six years ago, Art Linkletter ruined my day ruined and day. my week and my month mm. and my year. And your memories for decades. Yeah, because okay. it got a little place in there yep. where you can kill a guy nice with job. your mouth. Yeah. You can kill a guy oh, with sure. your tongue. Mm. Watch your words. Dirtiest, watch your expression. Dirtiest part of the body. Yeah, watch yeah. your expressions. Oh, yeah. Because you can hurt people's feelings. Mm -hmm. So I want to be uplifting. If a fan recognizes me, first of all, thank you, because I don't look the same. And secondly, um, you mean if I sign something that you're going to be happy? Why wouldn't I? Mm. If, you, if you have the power to make a guy's day or break it, mm. why don't you just make it? So that's what keeps me grounded. I know that I'm no better than I was when I was 12. I just got lucky. Okay. Lucky to be the son of Angelo and Judy. Lucky to be the brother of Randy. And who knows how many opportunities I would have missed if those hadn't been true. So my point is, how do you stay grounded? I could get whacked out tonight. You see what I mean? Every day might be your last. Every day might be you, you guys last, you know. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna treat you like it's your last, cause you treat me like it's my last. How I know this isn't an easy question to ask, but I'm gonna try. How hard is it being the sole survivor of your family? It depends how you look at it. The hardest thing about losing my brother was that my mother was still alive, and I took care of her for six years and I thought how lucky my father was to die one year before my brother mm. and he got to miss that scene you know he was losing his marbles he had dementia mm -hmm. but he would have understood if the macho man was leaving mm -hmm. he would have known you know he never got to that point where he didn't know that mm. so it would have crushed him like it crushed my mother so I was there for my mother I took care of her I did what I could she says Lanny thanks for being so nice to me I said that's okay mom you were nice to me when I was in diapers. Mm. So she was, uh, and she's Jewish, you know. Mm -hmm. um, my, my, I have a Zadie and Bubby. 
There, my my Zaidi, the grandfather is from Lithuania. My grandmother, who I never met because she died before I was born, was Belarus, which near Chernobyl where the accident happened. Mm -hmm. My father's side, both my nono and nonna were from Lucca, Italy, which is between Florence and Pisa, as in the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So check it out on YouTube. There's a big wall around Lucca where 15 bicycles can go around, around. they rent them. And um, it's a great place to visit. Who was there for <coughs> you? As you said, you were there for, to support everyone else when your family members were passing away. Who was there for you when you were the last one? Millions and millions of fans. Okay. My daughter, a lot of people came out of the woodwork mm -hmm. to give me their love, support, and kindness. And you know what? Thank you to all of you. You know, I'll tell you what. I needed it. Where could fans see you this weekend, Lonnie? Oh, you'll see me hanging <laughs> around at the um, WrestleCon. Might even be a few more places. You never know. Oh, okay. nice, nice. You know, Billy Jack's going to be there. You can stop by and say hi. I sure will. I like him, man. He's got a good guy. WrestleCon, I heard, has got a lot of former. You're going to see a lot of old friends there, I think, right? That's right. It's almost like a family reunion in some strange ways, right? Right. I just hope we don't have a family feud like we had in New Orleans. What happened? Harry Smith threw hot coffee on oh, Jake that, Roberts' face. Yeah, can you tell that story real quick? Well, I was signing autographs, and I hear, Fuck! And that was Jake. <laughs> so I, I was going to turn the corner, but I was busy with autographs. And then I heard about it. And um, evidently, Jake had said some not nice things about Davy Boy Smith on one of the shows like this. Mm. And Harry was listening. Now, Harry's a very nice person, but he's got shoulders this long, yeah, big dude, <laughs> this yeah. wide. Yeah, big dude. And, that, and, you know, I know you can't judge a book by its cover, but judging a book by its cover, I think if he misses, somebody will break their jaw. Mm. Yeah. Wow. I got to tell you, I think when sometimes people get on the air, they just get caught up in the moment, right? And they might tell stories or, uh, you know, exaggerate a story here or there just for the cameras. I don't know. Maybe it's just a human fault, maybe at some point. I don't know. How many times a year do you like to go to these sorts of things? Is this something that's regular as part of your schedule or something that you just do randomly or? Whenever the phone rings, I consider it. If I got something better to do, I don't. But if I have nothing to do and lots of time to do it, here I am. Do you ever expect Vince to call you again at any point? If he calls me, I'll listen. There you go. If he doesn't, it still worked out very well for me. Safe to say you would accept the Hall of Fame nomination if you were if you were asked. I wouldn't turn it down. There you go. Huh. Fair enough. All right, so we're uh, about out of time. Lanny, you want have anything to say to the fans before we go? In closing? I want to thank you for all of your support, and I want to thank each and every one of you for buying those wrestling tickets for the new crowd that's out there today because they need to eat too. Well, that's about it. So, so that's that's a dot. Begin begging. What? It's an old joke. Never oh, mind. All right. Middle East stuff. Go okay. On. Well, anyway, this <laughs> is not gonna begin. Yeah. This has been another begging. episode so of Monty not. Nefaro. I want to thank uh, future Hall of Famer Mr. Lanny Poffo. Yeah. And uh, for joining us on yeah. our show, and uh, you can catch us tomorrow at uh, eight a.m. with Stan the Larry at Hanson. You gotta go to bed and get up at about 10 nine thirty with JJ Dillon, uh, and I think now possibly three o'clock with the Natural Butch Reed. Oh, uh, okay. Trying to up that schedule, so it's uh, the road to WrestleMania. You know, we had Coco Beware in here yesterday. We've got the great Lanny Poffo in today, and uh, and remember, folks, instead of the three P's pleasure, power, and possession. Think of it this way. Health, wealth, and freedom, in that order. That's a better philosophy to get through your life and enjoy. Somebody said, uh, you know, you only, you only live once. I said, no, you only die once. You live every day. Uh, wow. So my three philosophies of peace, pot, and microdot is completely out. <laughs> microdot. Out. Oh, oh. Microfiche. It was worth a shot. <laughs> Microfiche. Yeah. Remember those days? <laughs> <laughs> the micro what? Microfiche. No, what was microfiche? Anyway. Film in a library. <laughs> oh, okay. He's right. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. What it was. Thank you, Steve. Must have been doing drugs. I missed it. Nice. Anyway, you catch it. Uh, <laughs> Wild's number one pro wrestling broadcast. And, you know, again, can't thank you enough, Mr. Poffo. 
great insight and uh, you're a great human being. And, uh, and thank thanks you, for man. never being late at the airport to pick me up. Yeah. Gotta, gotta, gotta say yeah. it to these two guys, man. Well, I been my late. plane was half an hour early and still we were there. you guys were there before my bag showed up. We were doing circles before we heard you. We were there. Yeah. Really? I'll let you know I landed. Yep. I said, you're supposed to land later. And said, so usually when you land early, the plane can't get to a gate. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so you're still there. But uh, you guys are polite and professional, and uh, I love your show, and Thank every you. wrestling fan should listen. Thank you. Well, that's that's what we're looking to get to. So, uh, you know, with the help of guys like yourself, uh, you only make us more popular. And, again, thank you again. Anyway, this has been another episode of Monty the Fire. We'll catch you tomorrow. Later. <laughs>